Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this is a short video in Microsoft Word for Windows on using the References tab in Microsoft Word. Uh, there should be similar capacities in other operating systems, so this information should be translatable regardless of what kind of computer you're using. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at adding a table of contents, an endnote, and a footnote, and a little bit about citations. This is something that can be really useful in school or if you work with a newspaper or any other place that needs a lot of writing and citing and footnoting and so on. So one of the first things you could do is go to the References tab, and I'm in an open document now that currently has a couple of Heading 1s and Heading 2s. That would be like the introduction and main paper are using Heading 1 style, and then the subheaders are using Heading 2 styles. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a table of contents. So Word gives you a couple of built-in ones, or you can make your own, which can get a little bit interesting. We'll just go ahead and do an automatic one so you see how it looks. I'm going to click Automatic Table 2 because it reads Table of Contents. And it shows you in the preview the way the Table of Contents can show up based on whether it, Word sees Heading 1 or Heading 2 or Heading 3 in the style. Here, when I put it in, we have a heading 1 and heading 2, and that's how this works. And then, basically, a person should be able to click with control, click, and it would take you down to, hello, come on, there we go. It could take you down to somewhere um, on another page that that table of contents uh, needs you to go. So that's pretty useful. Now, if I were to come in and come down here and put this second subheader on another page by doing an insert page break, well, the page count of some things in this table of contents would change. So I can click the table of contents and I can update the table. I can update the page numbers only or I could update the entire table. The entire table would be updated if you were actually to add new sections like a preface and a glossary and then you want to make sure everything's updated. Otherwise, I'm just going to update the page numbers. Click OK. So now it indicates that the second subheader is on page 3. That's interesting. How did that happen? Probably because I did no, there's page 3. Page, oh, okay, here we are. So this is this is this is how it works. Cool. The next thing I want to do is show you a little bit about uh, footnoting and endnoting. So back in the references tab, footnoting is when the the footnotes appear at the end of the page you're on, and endnotes have to do with if your footnotes appear instead at the end of the document. So we're going to start with a footnote. I'm going to just say I would like to make a footnote of some information right here. And I'm not going to use this video to go over different kinds of footnote and endnote and citation types like MLA or Chicago style or any of that. This is just to show you how to use the tool to add something. So say this was a really important point and I wanted to make a footnote. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a footnote. What you just saw here is I clicked that. And now I see a number, number one up here, a little number one. And if I scroll down to the bottom of the page, you get this interesting, where's my scroll bar? Interesting little field that's kind of in the footer, but not really. I changed the width of the footers. So it's still in the main document, but it pushes down some of the document above it to the next page and gives you the space where you could put your footnote information in. Now, if I were to do the same thing on another paragraph with an endnote, an insert endnote, it would go down to the very bottom of the last page of the text. And what it did up here, sorry, is it put, instead of a number one, it put this like little I, like that. And then, We go down to the bottom of the document, which is on page three now. Oh, it's actually moved down to page four. And then you would type endnote information here. So that's a little bit about how those go. 
Finally, let's just take a look at the citation area here. You actually, if you write a lot of papers and you're using Microsoft Word for it, a good idea might be to consider if you could find a free or low cost reference manager that can really handle a lot of references and stuff. But actually, Microsoft Word has tried to build something in, so it's probably perfectly good for school use and for beginning use until you realize you're outgrowing it. So, for instance, say you want to cite something, you get a quote from somebody and you would just simply like at the end of the quote to indicate the publication it was in and the name of the author. You can come here and say, we're going to insert a citation, add a new source. I would have to go add a source based on what I know. So it will give me the chance to add this, create a source to store in Word with my document. So say I wanted to actually cite the website um, that is named, um, let's see, Office Ipsum. There's no actual author to it, but the name of the web page is also <laughs> Office Ipsum. But uh, I'm going to, okay, but I'm going to say Office Ipsum, the web page is client comments. Okay. Then the year, I'm putting in the year I looked it up, and I'm not doing this perfectly as a scholar. I'm just showing you some basic information, and then I would uh, put in the eight, uh, URL. Dot. Mm. I'm making this up because I don't actually remember the, but we'll just do it like this. So you put that information in there. You could show more fields. So if you're actually preparing a series bibliography and you want to store this and you want to share what the magazine is and the page numbers and what the type of uh, 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 copyright it has and co-authors and all sorts of other things, you could do that. Now let's say, um, just say nobody was here. <laughs> That's the author. So, okay, now I have a citation and I'm going to put that. Okay, so I put it in here. This is the citation. But the other thing I could do is come up here and check out Manage Sources. And I have one source in here. So as you build a paper for one of your classes, as you read through something and you want to make a citation, or say you have eight sources, it might be good right away to set up your source manager so that anytime you need to make a citation, you could just pull from the existing source manager. And you would want to fill it out properly. You would find out from your instructor or your employer if you're working as a journalist or if you're working in a company that needs you to cite specific things for the annual report, specific financial data or whatever. Whatever their standard is, you would look for um, that style. And in Word, you could choose the different styles to focus on. So this APA, there's the Chicago style, let's see, where's the, there's MLA, and um, I'm sure that anyone who's taking writing classes is learning about that. You can also insert captions to things. You can insert a table of figures. We're not going to go into that, but these are things you can play with on your own. So I hope this was helpful to you on learning just a little bit about references in Microsoft Word. Thank you.